Hello and welcome to a look at the five new weapons that are coming in the Weapons Crate DLC. They're currently available on the CTE servers. They're a very early pass. Four of them don't even have textures. So I'm going to do a look at them in the test range, show you what their recoil is like, show you what their hip fire is like, and then try and work out what they're actually for. All the stats I'm going to give in this video have come from the Synthic.com forums and I believe they were originally sorted out by Mifli, but I might be wrong. I can't trawl through all the posts to try and work out who posted them originally, but I think it was Mifli. Bear in mind that any of these stats could change over the next few days. So first of all we're going to take a look at the AN94. So if you watched my recent video you'll know what it's like in Battlefield 3 and essentially it's very similar in Battlefield 4, but there are a few subtle changes. It can use all the gadgets and attachments that a standard assault rifle can do, and for these tests it's going to be bare except for a sight. So if you've seen my weapon test videos before, you'll know I shoot from the same spot every time, and it's a little bush that's just here. And the reason I picked this is it's exactly 25 meters away from this wall. So what I'm doing is firing full auto at that wall without actually compensating at all. I'm just letting the gun ride as it would do normally. Now you may notice that the gun seems to stutter a bit while firing. This isn't anything to do with the recording. It was actually doing that in game. Unlike its BF3 counterpart, the BF4 version of the AN94 actually comes as default in full auto mode. It fires 600 rounds per minute and it's doing 24.5 damage per shot. And as you can see, its recoil pattern is pretty much straight up and down and it doesn't spread that much. And that's because the AN94 has a very good recoil pattern. Its upwards recoil is 0.24, its left recoil is 0.1, and its right recoil is 0.12. So its side to side recoil is pretty much balanced, and its vertical recoil is pretty low. It's got an aim down sight accuracy of 0.2 when stationary, so standing still, your shots are going to go pretty much exactly where you want them to go. The AN94 still has its two shot burst fire mode, it's just now you have to select it. And as you can see, if you let the gun settle back down, it's putting those shots pretty much pinpoint accurately onto the same place every time. Now the sight does look a bit odd because the models are slightly off. The actual reticles are in the right place, but the sight model is skew with. But that doesn't affect the accuracy of the gun. And this burst fire mode, combined with its recoil and its aim down sight accuracy, make the AN-94 still the best long range option you have as an assault rifle. Even when you burst fire in a bit more of an uncontrolled fashion, the gun is still really accurate. Once you've got the timings down, it'll be even more accurate. But as you can see, for unpracticed burst fire, that is still pretty good. This gun isn't going to win any close quarters firefights. It's only got the 24 damage model. It's only doing 600 rounds per minute and its hip fire is awful at 3 and 3.5 if you're moving. But for a long range assault rifle, the AN-94 is still the king. Next going to move on to the two Grozers, and I'm going to start with the Grozer 4, which is the PDW for the Engineer. And it's quite a quirky old looking gun. You can use all the standard sights on it, you can use all the standard accessories on it, but you can't change the barrel out, but you can use any grip you fancy. Now the Grozer 4 is pretty quirky in the stats department. It does 26 damage per shot, up to 8 meters, and then it drops off to 15.4. It's doing 700 rounds per minute, but bizarrely it has a magazine size of 21, when the Grozer 1, which is the same gun, has a magazine size of 31. Only 21 rounds and with a reload time of 2.0 seconds with a round left and 3.4 when empty mean the Grozer can get you into trouble. But as you can see it's got a pretty good recoil pattern. Its vertical recoil is 0.31, its left recoil is 0.15 and its right recoil is 0.24. So it's pretty balanced, drags a bit to the right, that's easy to correct. 
what lets it down is its aim down sights accuracy at 0.45 but its burst fire pattern at 25 meters is pretty good this gun is crippled at ranges but at close range it's a pretty good PDW so let's compare that to the Grozer 1 which is its bigger brother in fact it's the same gun just that this one is a carbine version and so it can be used by any class it's got an integrated front end which includes a vertical grip and can only include a vertical grip the Grozer 1 can use any sight any accessory but can only use a standard barrel and can only use a vertical grip and that means there's no way to compensate for the Groza 1's recoil and that's a bit of a problem because this gun is pretty damn awful the Groza 1 can do 30 damage out to about 8 meters but its recoil is horrendous it's 0.57 up, 0.4 left and 0.4 right and there's no way to compensate for it because you can't give it barrel attachments or different grips and that balanced 0.4 recoil left and right means there's no way you can compensate for its side to side recoil because it's too unpredictable so combining uncontrollable side to side recoil with unmodifiable vertical recoil and this thing is horrendous even in burst fire it's impossible to get an accurate grouping because its first shot multiplier is 2.1 as well this carbine has no redeeming features when it comes to full auto fire or aiming down sights so you would imagine it must be a hip fire god so let's go and compare the two grozers when it comes to hip fire so switching back to the Grozer 4 and standing a bit close to the wall I'm going to do a hip fire test but you can already see from the hip fire reticle that it should be pretty good at hip fire and it's doing a decent pattern its hip fire accuracy is 0.75 when stationary 0.125 when moving so this gun is good at hip fire just that 21 magazine size and that reload mean it's not going to be great in close quarters combat but its hip fire accuracy and recoil mean that you should hit who you aim at you're just going to run out of rounds faster than you think so we know this gun's bad when it comes to aimed fire but maybe it's got some really good hip fire unfortunately not and that's because its hip fire accuracy is 1.5 when standing still that's worse than the Grozer 1's hip fire accuracy when it's moving I really don't know what they were thinking when they designed this gun it's got terrible recoil that you can't compensate for it's got a terrible first shot multiplier that you can't compensate for and it's got terrible hip fire accuracy this gun has no redeeming features whatsoever I really don't understand why it's here right so let's move on to something that's hopefully better and that's the L86A2 so this is the closest combination you're going to get between an assault rifle and an LMG effectively in the real world it is an assault rifle with a longer barrel and it can take all the usual LMG gadgets, accessories, barrels and underbarrels. The L86A2 has a standard damage model, 24 dropping off to 18 and it's got a rate of fire of 700 rounds per minute. Strangely 50 slower than the L85A2. It's got the same magazine size as the L85A2 at 30 rounds but it's bizarrely quicker to reload the L86A2 when it's got a round left by 0.2 of a second but bizarrely it's slower by 0.2 of a second to reload the L86A2 when it's empty and when we look at the reload pattern on the wall that's pretty damn good and the reason for that is it's got better recoil than the L85A2 its vertical recoil is 0.29 up compared to the L85A2's 0.37. It's got a left and right recoil of 0.18 compared to the L85's 0.22. So this gun actually recoils better than the assault rifle counterpart. Now I'm trying to do a bipod test with the L86A2, but the iron sights are screwed up while you're using a bipod. And if you aim with the circle, you fire into the ground. So I'm trying to work out where I've actually got to aim to hit the wall. 
but when I do get the gun to hit the wall it's a very surprising result. Because despite how much the sight appears to be bouncing around and how far the gun appears to be moving around, when you look at the pattern on the wall it just doesn't match up. So here it is. A very small group indeed for uncontrolled bipod fire. Something with this gun is a bit off at the moment. The sights are bouncing around all over the place, but the pattern you get on the wall looks like everything is going in the same place. And just to confirm it, I'll try it again. This time, I realise I can aim at the wall with the hip fire reticle, then zoom in and start firing. So, aimed fire with a bipod, and you can see the sight bounces around all over, but when you go to the wall, you've got that same very small pattern. So this is a very odd gun. It's got better recoil than the L85A2, it's got better aim down sights when stationary than the L85A2, and it's really good on a bipod. And finally we have the mare's leg. Now, in my opinion, this is the most broken gun of the five. It's going to dramatically change the way the game plays, and not for the better. So the name Mare's Leg actually comes from a TV show in which Steve McQueen played a bounty hunter who used a customised Winchester rifle. Shortened barrel, shortened stock. It was called the Mare's Leg because it kicked like a horse. But cutting down rifles and shotguns as saddle guns or easily portable guns was quite common in the Old West. The problem with the version in Battlefield 4 is that it's not a pistol, it's a sniper rifle. It can take all the usual sniper rifle attachments and it's got all the usual sniper rifle properties. So I'm going to put a mark on this wall and then move back and shoot at it. And we'll see just how accurate the mare's leg is. Now, this is a pistol, so I usually be stopping around here. Maybe if you were testing the Magnum, you'd stop around here. But for the mare's leg, we'll stop around here. So for a pistol to be accurate at this kind of range in a Battlefield game would be ludicrous. Well, this pistol is ludicrous. Because you can also breathe to steady your shot. And you'll notice it doesn't drop the sights to reload. Because it's a Winchester action, it reloads and keeps you looking down the sights. So, it comes with an 8x scope and pretty much a straight pull bolt. In the real world, this gun is a 44. In game, it's been reduced to a 357. So, it's doing 56 damage down to 37.5 damage at 60 meters. So, close up, it's a one shot headshot. Out to range, you're going to need two shots. But as you can see from this pattern, hitting a target with two shots at long range isn't exactly a problem. So from over there to here with a pistol and getting that grouping. This gun is broken. It's going to get nerfed into the ground. So that's aiming and steadying fire. What kind of result do you get if you don't steady fire, you just fire pretty much as quickly as you can get the sights back on target. Because this gun has a rate of fire of 200 rounds per minute. So there's a marker shot, and now I'm going to empty the gun at it as fast as I can. Now although the mare's leg only has a 6 round magazine, it does have an incredibly quick reload. And it's artificially quick, but we'll get into that later on. So why do I think this gun is so broken and is going to change the way the game plays? Well let's compare it to the Magnum. The Magnum is the long range pistol. But this thing outclasses the Magnum in every way. It's got the same damage model as the Magnum, but it's got a higher rate of fire, it's got a faster reload, it's got less recoil, and it's a lot more accurate than the Magnum. Plus you can add every sniper rifle gadget and when you're firing quick, you still get a grouping like this at a relatively long range. This gun just turns everybody into a sniper. And it kind of ruins the game. But let's go back and take a quick look at that reload, because it is stunningly quick. 
And there's a reason for that. It's not reloading six rounds. It's only reloading four, but giving you six. I'll fire the gun into the ground and reload it again. And it has got some really nice animations, this gun. But look, firing six shots, but when it comes to reloading, one, two, three, four. But six in the magazine. So something is very broken with this reload. So that's all five guns from the Weapons Crate DLC. And what do I think of them? AN-94, that gets a tick. It does exactly what the AN-94 should do. Great at long ranges, not so good at close ranges, and it's got its own unique feel because of that burst fire mode. The Grozer 1 is getting a cross. Yes, it's got that damage model, but in every other respect, the gun is useless. The Grozer 4 can have a tick because it's a good little hipfire gun. Sure, its magazine size is going to get you into trouble, and maybe it's trying a bit hard to be the AS Val, but overall, the Groza 4, I think, works. The L86A2 can also get a tick. It's a good crossover between assault rifles and LMGs. It's just a bit odd that in some ways it's better than the L85A2. And finally, we have the Mare's Leg, which is getting a massive cross next to it. No, 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 no. This gun needs fundamentally changing, otherwise it's going to ruin the game. It's a sniper rifle everybody can carry. Who thought that was a good idea? Now, these are very early versions of the guns. There's going to be balances and changes as they go through development on CTE. But at the moment, the Grozer 1 needs a bit of a buff, and the Mare's Leg either needs a considerable nerf or a bit of a rethink as to how it actually works. It's too much like a sniper rifle. Anyway, hope you found this interesting and thanks for watching.